Hello everyone, it's Bon and welcome back to my channel. So earlier this year, I got my hands on two point and shoot film cameras. The first one is the Contax TVS, which I already made a video about. And the next one is the Minolta PS, Minolta P's, also known as the Riva Panorama or the Freedom Vista outside of Japan. What's common between these two cameras is that they both take panoramic photos or photos that have a longer field of view, usually with the image being twice as wide as it is high. This results in an aspect ratio that most of us see in movies, hence in our collective visual language, it has become synonymous with cinematic. For some reason, I've always been drawn to this aspect ratio. Even back when I used to paint, I have frequently used longer widths to compose my paintings. There's just something about this aspect ratio that when used properly, makes an image aesthetically pleasing to my eyes. So naturally, I would also be drawn to this aspect ratio as I delve deeper into photography. I find that composing photos in this aspect ratio is quite challenging. Unlike in drawing, where I have full control of where the elements would appear in the image, in photography, I'm kind of stuck with how the world around me is already arranged. The wider field of view will also include more of the environment into the image, which means that finding the right balance can be a bit hard. Also, when you're taking a photo and you tilt the camera even just a little bit, you'll end up with a very misaligned photo. Sure, you can crop this in post, but this could sometimes result in a composition that is not what you've intended. I think of this as an exercise in seeing the world differently. Whenever I compose in this aspect ratio, I become more attentive to my surroundings and thus become more observant of the scene. Plus, it can automatically make your photos look cinematic, which I think is a very cool trend nowadays. Now, there are many ways to take panoramic photos on film. Uh, I think the best way to do this is through a dedicated film camera like the Hasselblad X-Pan or the Fuji TX-1. This is my dream camera. I've been drooling over this camera since 2018, but I just can't justify spending $5,000 Canadian um, for an old camera with old electronics that can die at any time, which will basically just render it into an expensive piece of brick. So I've been checking out alternatives for quite a while now. The most obvious one is to crop a photo, which I think is the least challenging and the least fun. You can also stitch photos together like how your smartphone does in pano mode. If you wish to stick to dedicated film cameras that are less expensive than the Fujifilm TX1 or the X-Pan, Lomography offers a few cameras that take panoramic photos. My favorite one is the Sprocket Rocket, which I made a video about a long time ago. And the Bel Air with its 35mm film adapter, but as you can see in here, I haven't even unboxed these guys, so I obviously haven't tried them yet. You know, for somebody who whines about spending money to buy his dream camera, I sure have spent a lot of money buying all of these other cameras. I think if I tell them up, it'll be enough to buy an X-Pan. Anyways, there's also the Horizon camera which you spin to take a 360 panoramic photo. However, I'm not really interested in that. Moving on, you can also load 35mm film into medium format film cameras like the Fuji GW692. You can use these special adapters that you can buy online or 3D print yourself. I haven't done this myself, but there's a few tutorials out there if you're feeling adventurous. Rather than adapting medium format cameras, you can also get modified cameras like the Faux X-Pan, which is custom made by Freeman, who's also a Calgarian like me. He's a one-man team though, and his waitlist is quite long at the moment. And this brings me back to film point-and-shoot cameras that can take panoramic photos. 
Back in the 90s, for some reason, there was a boom in point-and-shoot cameras that are like these. Um, the way that these cameras take panoramic photos, though, is a bit gimmicky. For example, when using the panoramic mode of the Contax TVS, these masks pop out to cover a portion of the film. And for the Minolta P's, you don't even get the normal option. It's panoramas through and through when you use this camera. So, as you can see, you won't be using the full height of the film, which means that you will get a lower resolution image and is a tad wasteful. I can see why some people claim that you're better off cropping a full photo afterwards, but hey, sometimes it's nice to capture the image in camera. Sure, nobody would really care whether I cropped an image or composed it in camera, but I will know. <laughs> I'm doing this for fun and I get more satisfaction that way. To each their own. Anyways, about a month ago, I came out to test the panoramic capabilities of both of these film cameras, and I really enjoyed using both of them. Here's a montage of my photo walk. I began this photo walk by going to Nose Hill Park here in Calgary because I've been stuck so long at home that I needed some exercise, and I thought going for a walk might be good. And I might as well take photos while I'm at it. Both cameras are very small and really easy to use. I mean, I was basically using one hand to take these photos because I was filming with the other hand. So, yeah. As you can see in some of these images, the Minolta P's field of view is wider because it has a 24mm lens. Meanwhile, the Contax TVS has a zoom lens that is 28mm at its widest and 56mm at its longest. I actually tended to zoom in more using the Contax. I wasn't really comparing the cameras but rather using them in parallel, so instead of taking the exact same photos, I decided to play with different compositions that each camera allows me to take. A lot of people walk their dogs in Nose Hill Park, which is kind of really cute to see. My goal for this photo walk is to reach the summit of the hill, where you can see Calgary's west side as well as the Rocky Mountains. And this may not be the best photo to show this, however, landscapes can look a little bit more dramatic with this aspect ratio. Can you take a selfie with it? Yeah, it's pretty easy with the Minolta P's given that it has a wide 24mm focal length. Here's some more photos that I took in the suburbs. Okay, pause. I think this image is a good example for why some people say that it is better to take a full photo and then just crop it later because I think this image would have been better if I have just taken it a little bit lower, but I can't adjust that because I don't have the full image. Oh well. Image quality wise, they're both pretty good for point and shoot cameras. I mean, I expected the Contax TVS to be good as it has a Carl Zeiss lens, but the Minolta P's lens is also quite good. The Contax tended to have more contrast, while the Minolta had less, which I kind of preferred. They're both pretty sharp as well. Here's a few more shots comparing the field of view of each cameras.
finish both rolls of film, I went down to Kensington, which is a really nice place to hang out if you're in Calgary. It has a lot of cool cafes, restaurants, shops, and it's really close to the riverfront, so you can get some really cool views of the Calgary downtown. And I guess that's it. Overall, I really enjoyed taking photos using the Context TVS and the Minolta piece. Currently, I've been using the Context more because I like to be able to switch between the pano mode and the normal mode. This means that, as fun as it was to use, my Minolta piece have mostly been sitting on my shelf. However, I do have some plans for it in the future. So what do you folks think about taking panoramic photos? Do you like it? Do you also want to buy an X-Pan? <laughs> I actually prefer the Fujifilm TX1 over the X-Pan because of the silver finishing. However, I, the X-Pan seems to be more popular, or the name X-Pan seems to be more popular, so I just call them both X-Pan. I mean, they're the same anyways. <laughs> so let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel grow, no matter how slow. That rhymed. And while you're still here, please subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.